So before the break, we talked briefly about the differential to single-ended conversion. And we talked about different ways of converting it. And one of the stages that we talked about was using a um, current mirror to achieve that. So one of the things that we can do, we are going to now look at this a little bit more briefly, uh, but uh, in the context of a MOSFET stage. So if you have a MOSFET stage, the same deal, right? I mean, you can actually implement a current mirror to reflect the current from the input to the output. And the idea here is, again, the way to think about it is that if you're applying a differential input, so this is VID over 2 and this is negative VID over 2, if you apply VID over 2 here, the drive current here is going to be GM VID over 2. Let's call it GMN for a MOSFET, because each one of them will have its own W over L. And they don't necessarily have the same um, GM. This is one of the differences. In a bipolar, if you have two transistors, the NPN and PMP, that are carrying substantially the same current, they will have the same GM, right? Because GM is IC over VT. Now, in a MOSFET, though, that's not necessarily the case, because GM, in terms of current, is square root of 2 mu n, w, mu n C ox W over L times ID. And you can basically change the ratio of GMs by controlling the ratio of W over L, which is something you can actually take advantage of in design. So we have to choose a W over L for each one of these things. But before we do that, this current is going to be now reflected down here. So this current is going to be GM VID over 2. Now this current going in, so this is again was the, the important part, this going in is going to be negative GM VID over 2, which you can actually flip the polarity. So you can make this plus and make it point into the node again. So now they're additive. You can see that they're additive. I mean, they were additive all the time, but this way you can see that they were additive. They're not subtractive. Because both, they're both now injecting into that node. And of course, the total resistance on this node is the RON, I'm sorry, ROP in parallel with RON. Here. OK, so, so these were the elements that are involved in this. So, now, the gain here, this is, we we'll have to be careful. This is GMN, and this is GMN2. Why? Because it's just reflecting this current here, which was determined by GMN. This is just a mirror. So now, if I want to design this, if you wanted to dis design the circuit for gain, maximizing the gain, let's see what we needed to do. We want, what, are the, what is the gain? We've already calculated this, so we write it quickly. It's GMN, RON, parallel ROP. So we need to get high GM and high output resistance. High transconductance and high output resistance. So we can pick some values. I mean, let's, let's just pick some numbers here. You don't want this. So let me ask you a question. This W over L for the NFET, do you want to use a, at least initially, what do you think we need to pick it at, the L? Do you want this to be very small, very large? What do you want it to be? And why? Well. It appears that you want to get high, G, high gain, right? High GM. So if you want a high GM, both expressions, both in terms of current and voltage of GM, have a re direct relationship with W over L. So you obviously don't want, it appears that you don't want a very small W over L. You want a beefier transistor, it appears. So let's pick something. Let's just, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make some numbers. 10 microns over, let's make them long, 1 micron. I mean, it can be a uh, tenth of a micron, 100 nanometers, or 65 nanometers, or whatever. Right? Let's just pick some numbers. I mean, the ratios are really not what that matters. So if you pick something like this, now how about this guy? From a gain perspective, do I need my MOSFETs to be large or small? Just purely from the gain perspective. What determines my output resistance? Let's, let, let's write the expressions, right? What is GM? GM, in terms of if your current is fixed, is going to be 2 mu n or mu p w, c ox w over l id. And RO is basically um, l over id times dxd dvds or 1 over dxd dvds inverse. So these are the things that will affect me. Now, we want to get high output resistance at least for the PFETs, right? 
So that means that I don't need a very large, I, I actually want a relatively large L if I could get it. So let's give some numbers. Let me just say mu n C ox, let's say of 100 micro amps per volt squared, mu P C ox, these are like uh, 50 micro amps per volt squared. Let's say DXD DVDS of 0.1 for n 0.1 micron per volt and dxd dvds for p of 0.05 micro micrometer per volt some very standard classic numbers just uh, long channel numbers just to get a feel um, okay so what do we get let's do the calculations let's say we bias this at I don't know, 200 microamps. So each stage gets, each side gets one micro. Let's do that actually at one milliamp because we did one milliamp for the uh, bipolar just to get a feel of comparison, right? So if you do a one milliamp, what are the GMs? Well, the GM is a function of W over L. So for this one, we've picked a GMN is going to be two times 100 microamps, 200, mi 200 microamps times 10. 2 milliamps per volt squared times 100 microamps, right? So, did you see what did I say? Sorry? 500 microamps. 500 microamps, yeah, I, I, I just resort to my calculator. Okay, so 2 times 100 micro, right, times 10 times 500 micro. So that's one, oh, nice, it's one millisiemens. So GM is one millisiemens, GMN. That's what we really need. I mean, we don't need a GMP. It doesn't appear in our calculations. But if you need it, we can calculate. Now, how about RON? Let's calculate RON. RON is L. We said one micron. And this is 500 microamps. So... Every, these are in microns too, so I would just like this would be a one divided by 0.5 um, milliamps, and then then you have divided by 0.1, so that's 20 kilo ohms. So we get 20 kilo ohms. And then we have to calculate ROP. To so calculate ROP, you need to know what L is for the P, right? How do we choose that L? How do we choose the channel length of the PFET? What are the things that we, considerations that we have to uh, think about? Well, clearly, if I want to increase my output resistance, you need to I need to use a larger L. If that was my limiting factor, right? Now, what what do they what does that trade with? What are the trade-offs with of using a larger L? Speed is one, because you're making your device larger, it would have more capacitance, therefore um, you're limited by that. What else? Cost. Yes, but yes, theoretically yes, the size, you're concerned about the size, right? But these transistors are usually much smaller than the actual thing because you're limited by other things typically when you're doing analog, the pads and connections and all those things. So that would not be a primary consideration, although it could be if it becomes very large. What else? If I make a large W over L, a small W over L in the device, what happens to its DC voltage drop? What kind of voltage do I need to maintain? Remember, ID is mu n C ox over 2 W over L VGS minus VT squared, or delta VGS, the gate overdrive. All right? If I make this small by making L large, what does it imply for this guy, for a fixed current? This needs to be large, which means that I need to maintain a large voltage. It means that I can't really crunch this too much. I mean, this will go into triode region quickly uh, with the at a higher voltage, essentially my headroom will be limited. So there's another trade-off in terms of how much swing I can have. 
But okay, so we'll pick something. Let's just, I don't know, let's pick five. Let's, let's pick this to be one micrometer over five micrometers. It's still kind of like a little bit of a skewed device, but that's fine. Um, okay, if, at five micrometer, what do I get? What do we get? So we get five, right? So we get five divided by... half a milliamp divided by 0 0.05, 0 0.05. So that's 200 kilo ohms. Do they really need to make it this long? No, because now the parallel combination is dominated by RON. So this was a little bit of an overkill, and I'm probably going to pay for it through headroom and speed. So. Yeah, I've done it. We've done it already, but just like, let's, let's do it right. Okay, so let's, let's say, what would you put it at? I mean, I put, let's put it at 2 micro. If I put it at 2 micro, then what you get instead is going to be 80 kilo. All right, let's keep it that way. So what is the gain? Well, it's 20 in parallel with 80, whatever that is. So it's 2 times 8 divided by... 10, so it's 1.6, so it's 16 kilo ohm. So the, this parallel combination, this is going to be 1 millisiemens times 16 kilo ohms. It's gain of 16. So that's the gain you get from this. Not incredibly high, right? So what do we do to improve it? Let's say if you want to get something higher than that. How do we increase the gain? Cascode. cascode, for example, right? How do we cascode this? So first of all, I can make this a cascode. If we make that a cascode, it will look like this. So each one of them needs to be a cascode. Each one of those single transistors becomes a cascode, and you end up with something like this. So, so you can actually connect these two and say this is some V bias, which we haven't talked about really how to generate yet. but and then you can have your mirror up here and take your output here, V out and V in. So what is the gain here now? Let's say you don't change the transistor dimensions or the currents, so we don't have to recalculate everything. Well, what is the gain? Well, the drive is similar, right? So, so you can say, if this was VID over 2, this is going to be v, uh, GM and VID over 2. Now, if this current is GM, VID over 2, what is this current, AC? It's the same, right? It's a MOSFET. This current is reflected here. So this is going to be GM, VID over 2. It's going to be reflected here, GM, VID over 2. Same trick here, negative VID over 2. This is basically, if you can change the polarity, this becomes GM VID over 2. This is going to be GM VID over 2. So it's a question of what is the resistance on that node? This is still ROP. What is this looking down? What is this resistance looking down now that it did cast code? No, there's no beta. This is this MOSFET. It's the intrinsic gain of this guy times that output resistance, right? So if this was RON, this is going to be GMNRON, you can call it 2, RON1, times RON1. That's the intrinsic gain of this stage, of that transistor, right? Maximum intrinsic gain. So it gets multiplied by GMNRO. So, so what is GMNRO? It's like 20. Right? So it gets 20 times larger. So it comes 20 times 20 kilo ohms, because 400 kilo ohms. So now you have 400 kilo ohms in parallel with 80 kilo ohms, whatever that is. Um, that's 2.6, um, 26 kilo ohms. So now, did I say? No, no, that's, that doesn't sound right. So this becomes, sorry, this, this becomes 400 kilo ohms. It becomes what? Uh, five, six, five, eight, I think. 
56 kilohms? Sixty. Yeah. Let, let's more. Sound, sound. Okay. Let, let's count. Let's just. I, I did make a mess somehow. Four times. Okay. Yeah, I know what I made wrong. I did wrong. Okay. It's six point seven. Sixty-seven. It's sixty-seven kilo ohms. So the parallel combination becomes sixty-seven kilo ohms times the one milli Siemens. Um, so that gain becomes sixty-seven. So you went from sixteen to sixty-seven. Yeah, you got some gain, improvement. Still, if you want to get improvements, now we see what's the limiting factor. Now, obviously, now this has become the limiting factor. No, sorry. Uh, no, the bottom one, this one. Because this became 400. This was now 80 kilo, right? So we need to increase this one. How do we do that? Cast code the top one. So we go and make it a cast code. Now, there are different ways to make this a cast code. Now, one of them is to make this kind of a double current mirror, something like that. And we can talk about that extensively, but, um, but right now, what, when you do the output resistance of this thing, will also increase by the same amount. So this becomes GMP ROP2 times ROP1. And let's, just, let's say this is ROP1. So ROP1, we said, was like 80 kilo ohms. We have to calculate GMP, right? Two. So now we have to calculate what the GM, GM of that transistor is. So we need to do square root of 2 times 50 micro uh, times um, W over L, which is 1 half, times the current, which is half a milliamp. So that's 0 0.16 uh, millisiemens, or 160 microsiemens. So that's GMP. So that times, let's say 160 microsiemens, times the ROP, which was 80 kilo, that's 13. So this factor, the improvement factor, is 13, roughly. So you get 13 times that, so you get that times um, 80 kilo ohms, you get about a thousand, you get one mega ohm. So this shifts to about one mega ohm. So now what you have is the parallel combination of looking up, you see one mega ohm, looking down, you see about 400 kilo ohms. Right? So it's basically four divided by 14. It's 20, so it's 280. So the parallel combination is about 280 kilo ohms. That times one millisiemens, that gives you a gain of 280. Um, so you can see that the gain is going up, but not as quickly as we got in bipolar. Because you get less transconductance and you need to work harder for it. And if you want to do more, we can do more if we needed to. So that gives you a sense of what these numbers look like. Of course, the specific parameters would be different for different types of devices, but that's essentially the ballpark of it and how it will look like. And of course, you can keep increasing these by applying larger and larger, uh, more and more cascode or changing the channel lengths and playing with that to get more gain. All right. Any questions on that? <laughs>